and we're live. How you guys doing today? Good morning. Um, hope you had a good holiday. Hope you had a good Thanksgiving. Um, just a short announcement. Um, I'm going to be starting a series from now until the end of the year or until Christmas. Uh, I'm going to be just talking about Jesus and Jesus's life and I'm going to be going backwards. So I'm going to do a backwards, uh, uh, what would you call it? Not a chronology. It's like a reverse, a reverse chronology of Jesus's life. And so we're going to be looking at Jesus's life from his death all the way until Christmas. And then we're going to go backwards until he, uh, until he's born on Christmas day. Um, so I'm going to be working on that. So that's what we're going to be doing. Um, just a heads up, but, uh, Anyway, in today's message, as always, we're going to start with the, the Soul Stirring Songs and Hymn Book. And we're going to uh, sing uh, number 44, We'll Work Till Jesus Comes. And we're going to have an opening reading from Psalms 37. And then I'm going to get into a little bit, little bit of preaching. And then we're going to close in prayer. And then, as always, we're going to have a reading from 1 Timothy, I believe, uh, as the closing reading. Anyway, let's begin. Let's begin. Number 44. We'll work till Jesus comes. We will work till Jesus comes. Here we go. <clears throat> oh, land of rest for thee, I sigh. When will the moment come? When I shall lay my armor by and dwell in peace at home, we'll work till Jesus comes, we'll work till Jesus comes, we'll work till Jesus comes and we'll be gathered home. To Jesus Christ I fled for rest, he bade me cease to roam, and lean for succor on his breast till he conduct me home. We'll work till Jesus comes, we'll work till Jesus comes, we'll work. Till Jesus comes and we'll be gathered home. I sought at once my Savior's side. No more my steps shall roam. With him I'll brave death's chilling tide and reach my heavenly home. We'll work till Jesus comes. We'll work till Jesus comes. We'll work till Jesus Jesus comes and we'll be gathered home. Amen. Amen. Our opening reading is in Psalms, book of Psalms, chapter 37, and we're just going to read the first 11 verses. The Bible says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so shall thou dwell in the land. And verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth all thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, and because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger, and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. The word of the Lord. We're going to stop there in verse 9. And 
I want to focus in on verse 9 right there where it says, Evil doers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Greetings, friends and colleagues, brothers and sisters. Good to see you. It's Sean Elvis. My message today um, is called Wait Upon the Lord. The Bible says, Evil doers shall be cut off. But those that wait shall inherit the earth. Wait upon the Lord, the Bible says. If you look back in Psalm 37, uh, chapter 1, or excuse me, verse 1, it says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Friends, my message today is called Wait on the Lord. You know, and, and... Waiting is sometimes the hardest work that you could do, right? Like, it can even be harder than if you're just chipping away at something, doing something hard. But just waiting, just waiting can sometimes be stressful. I mean, sometimes I, I hate to wait, right? I do, because we live in a world now. I grew up in a world. Um, those of us who grew up in the modern times with technology and cell phones and internet, we live in this instant gratification uh, generation, you know, everything's at our fingertips. If we want to talk to somebody, they're just a text away. You just pull out your phone out of your pocket, and uh, you can you can call them up. You can text them, and then you know what happens sometimes if if they don't answer us right away, right? They don't text back immediately. They make us wait just a little bit, right? We can sometimes get upset and say, "Why aren't they texting me back? What's going on?" And we especially, we don't like to wait for people who are, who are doing bad things, right? We don't like to see people who are doing bad get away with it. We want them caught. We want them in prison. We want them punished right now. That's part of uh, uh, why a lot of people um, carry their own protection and, and they take their own self-defense into their own hands because they don't want to wait for the police. But uh, I have a question for you. The Bible says here in, uh, in verse 1, of uh, Psalms 37 it says be uh neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity now who who admits to being envious of, of somebody who's a worker of iniquity somebody's doing bad somebody's doing evil it's not something you you hear very much but um God God made a point to remind us not to do it why because I think we do do it we do you know because I think we have a tendency to see people do bad things. They get away with it. And then we kind of we kind of envy them in a way like, oh, so they got away with it. Maybe I can get away with it. See, but uh, just because God is long-suffering, you know, just because he allows people uh, to get away with um, their punishment for a time doesn't mean that in the end there's not going to be a punishment, that there's not going to be justice. When we're not patient, when we don't wait upon the Lord, perhaps maybe it's because we're envious of those who are doing evil and getting away with it. Friends, we need to wait on the Lord, okay? We, even if we see other people doing bad stuff, we need to make sure that we just wait. We continue to do, we continue to do the right thing. Our blessings will come. Their punishments will come. We just need to wait. If you have a King James Bible... Turn to Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21. I want to look at a, a, a passage here where Jesus talks about um, the end times. You know, there's so much wickedness going on in the world nowadays. A lot of evildoers, people who are doing evil, seem to be like they're getting away with it, right? And sometimes we might get tempted to say, hey, I can't beat them. I'll just join them, <laughs> right? It's um, cause not, not a lot of the times are we going to be able to defeat our enemies, at least not right now, at least not in the moment when we, when we would hope to defeat them. But let's look at here uh, in, um, uh, uh, Luke, sorry, Luke chapter 21. Let's see what Jesus says. And we're going to start in verse eight. Jesus says, and he said, and he said, take heed that ye be not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time draweth near. Go ye not, therefore, after them. 
Jesus is talking about the end times, like I said. They're asking him about uh, what's going to happen, you know, uh, in the end of the world and, and, and uh, when you come back and, and things like that. And, and, he, and he's warning us that, you know, evil people one day will try to claim that uh, they're the Savior, that they're the Messiah, that they're Jesus, that they're here to save you. And he's saying, be not deceived about that, you know, just because they're on top of the world, okay? They're getting away with all their evilness. And they have most of the world deceived, thinking that they are the Savior, that they are the good guys. We should not be deceived. We need to just wait on the Lord. I think of today, you know, the world we're living in, a lot of people are scared right now, right? We got this pandemic, this virus spreading, um, supposedly killing everybody, and people just can't wait to be saved from it, right? They're just dying for somebody to come save them but instead of waiting on the lord instead of praying to god every day reading their bible and and doing what the bible says they're waiting for what they're waiting for a man-made cure a vaccine or you know jesus jesus says look go ye not after them you know but why not jesus why shouldn't why shouldn't we follow these guys i mean they claim to have the uh the the, the cure, Jesus says, go he not after them. Be not deceived. Let's see what else he says in verse 9. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. For these things must first come to pass. But the end is not by and by. Jesus is saying, terrifying things are going to happen in the last days. Terrifying things. And, he, and he's going to go on to talk about all those terrifying things that are going to, or some of the terrifying things that are going to happen. But look what he says. Be not terrified. Be not terrified. He says, just wait. Just wait on the Lord. It's going to be fine. This is all going according to plan. Sometimes when we're waiting, like I said, the hardest part is uh, just waiting. <laughs> going through the trials. Going through the motions. You know what the end's going to be, but you just have to wait. It's part of the plan. So many uh, times in our lives, uh, things go on in our lives and our life seems to spiral out of control and or what appears to be a spiraling out of control. But let me remind you, friends, God is always in control. Amen. You know, maybe in our life, we don't have control of it. It seems like the world's falling apart. But God just, he knows exactly what's going to happen. It's all part of his plan. I mean, uh, think back when, when, when God destroyed the world. Remember, uh, remember when he destroyed the planet the first time with a great flood back in Noah's time? Way back in the Old Testament. We're not going to turn there for the sake of time. But I'm sure Noah thought that his world was, was, coming to, was, was spiraling out of control. Okay, he's sitting there. Thinking, how long is this rain going to rain for? You know, when's it going to stop? And then, you know, when are we going to be allowed to come out of this ark? And God said, just wait, right? Just wait. You're going to be fine, Noah. I got this under control. And and just like in the New Testament, this room, Jesus reminds us again. He says, what's going to happen uh, now uh, in, the, in the end times is going to be very similar to what happened to Noah back in the day. He said, tribulations are going to come. You're going to think that the world's spiraling out of, con out of control, destruction. People are claiming to be uh, your savior. He said, just wait. Don't be deceived. And we need to build our ark, our church, just like Noah built his ark back then. The New Testament, Jesus, the Noah's ark, it's all symbolic for Jesus. We need to make sure that our priority now, here in our times, in our lives, is preaching the gospel, getting people saved, getting them into that ark, so to speak, the new covenant ark, the church, to Jesus. We need to lead them to the one who really will save them. And uh, unfortunately, that takes work. It takes patience. You know, I don't think Noah built his, uh, his, his ark in a year. You know, I think it took him... Um, a long time to build his ark, okay? And just like uh, just like Noah, it's going to take us a lot of work. It's going to take us a lot of patience. 
we're not going to be instantly gratified. Okay? But let's continue reading here. Jesus is going to ex explain all the bad stuff that's going to happen. Check this out in verse 10. And he said unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be uh, in diverse places, and famines, and pestilence, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you, and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues, and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And it, uh, and it shall turn to you for a testimony. So settle it there, bef uh, therefore, in your hearts, not to meditate before what ye shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinsfolks and friends. And some of you shall they cause to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but there shall not be a hair on your head perish. In your patience possess ye your souls. I want to focus in on that verse 19. He says, in your patience possess ye your souls. He's saying your very soul depends on how patient are you. Are you waiting on the Lord? Because your natural instinct when your friends are coming against you, when your parents, your own parents are coming against you, when the rulers and the kings are bringing you uh, before um, to persecute you, our natural instinct is uh, to fight back. Our natural instinct is to respond in fear and be terrified. Jesus says, be not terrified. Don't worry about it. Just wait. Be patient. It's all going according to plan. You don't have to talk your way out of it. I'll give you the words to say. I'll give you the wisdom that you need. Just believe in me. Trust in me. Wait on me. Wait on the Lord. Don't think that if, if you can't beat him, join him. Don't join him. Just wait. Jesus says, he says, relax. Be patient. Be patient. What did he say? He says, be patient. In your patience, possess ye your souls. He's telling us to wait. Not, not for the sake of just waiting, but he actually knows. For a fact, Jesus knows the future. He says, hey, I know that everything's going to be okay. It's all going to work out for our favor. We're going to win in the end. You just wait. Just wait. Hang on. Hang in there. Turn to uh, James chapter 1. James chapter 1. We're going to go forward in the Bible a few chapters to James chapter 1. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, like I said, you know, we live in a world of instant gratification. We live in, a, in, an, in an impatient world. We live in a world where people would rather destroy you or see you fail than to just wait for one second. Okay, just, just wait for one second for you to be finished with what you're doing. They, they'll push you out of the way. I can't wait. Get out of my way. We shouldn't be like that. James chapter 1, starting in verse 1, we'll just read a few uh, verses. James says, A servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings. We're all scattered abroad nowadays, aren't we? In the end times, Christians, even back then, Christians are scattered all over the world. We're in all we're in diverse places. Just be patient. One day the day's going to come when we will be united together. Be patient. Just wait on the Lord. Verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let your patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Wanting nothing. See, every time that we're patient, that we show patience, that we practice patience, our faith grows. Our faith grows. Whenever we're going through something, a trial, if you will, 
and we're patient. We wait on the Lord. We always have, and we get through it, we can see that, hey, the, the, the Lord actually took care of me. I got through it. I survived. Thank you, Jesus. Right? And then we can always look back on that situation. So when another situation comes along, and it's even worse than the first one, we can say, well, I waited, I waited back then, and the Lord made it okay. So I'll just wait now. I'll continue to do the right thing, continue to pray, continue to read my Bible, continue to follow after righteousness, and I'll be fine. The Lord will, will find me, uh, see me through it. Because throughout our lives, we're going to go through troubling situation after troubling situation, and God's always going to get us through it. We just need to wait. We need to wait patiently. In fact, the Bible says here in James that patience actually leads to perfection perfection it says let your patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect like i said we shouldn't just be patient on the lord though we should also be patient with other people if we want to be perfect right we want to be perfect we need to have patience not just with the lord though but also with other people when we talk to other people about jesus we need to be patient with them you know not everybody is ready to receive Jesus when we're re when we're ready to tell them about it, right? So we need to be patient. We need to have a heart that says, "Hey, I don't know what you're going through, but whatever you're going through, I'm going to help you through. I'm going to guide you. I'm going to be there with you to lead you to Christ, and 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 I'll be patient with you. You don't have to get it right now, because maybe sometimes people just test our patience to see if we really care." Do you really care about me? Or are you just telling me this Jesus stuff just to get me to uh, say a prayer with you and, and put a little check mark on your little on your little book so you can go tell everybody, oh yeah, I got this person to say a prayer with me. No, we need to actually really care for people. We really care. And one way to show that is to be patient with them. Don't argue back with them. Don't, don't fight with them. Be kind. Be nice. But... Anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent. We need to be patient with people, all right? Turn to Romans chapter 5. Let's go to Romans chapter 5. <clears throat> Romans chapter 5. Uh, we're going to start in verse 1. The Bible says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have pa oh, peace. Sorry, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. And rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Excuse me, sorry. Uh, um, Romans 5 verse 3. I'm gonna, uh, read till 5. <clears throat> Romans 5 3. And not only so, we glory in tribulations also. We glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh what? Worketh patience. Patience. And patience experience experience hope and hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given into us after we put our faith in Jesus that's the first step faith in Jesus your faith always comes first without faith it is impossible to please God there's nothing we can do without faith in Jesus amen but after that what comes next tribulation Tribulation's going to come, just like Jesus said, they're going to persecute us. What do we have to do when the tribulation comes, our, when our faith is tested? And our faith will be, t will be tested in various different ways, but the Bible says, what do we have to do? Be patient. Just be patient. Wait on the Lord. We need to just wait on the Lord, and then what happens? We gain experience. We know that, oh, okay, yeah, when I wait on the Lord... Like like I said, once you do it one time, you can always look back and say, oh yeah, it was fine back then. So then you have experience, so you know that when the next trial comes, ha, I have experience. I know what that waiting on the Lord leads to everything being fine. So I'll just wait on the Lord again. I have experience, which strengthens your hope, your hope. And when you have hope, guess what? You inspire other people to have hope. That's how, you, that's how you're going to reach people. That's how you're going to get people saved. Giving people hope. 
You know, not this false hope that the Antichrist is trying to give people. We're going to give people real hope through Jesus. Our only hope, really. Um, look, listen. If it, um, I want to talk about this, this, uh, this verse here um, in verse 5 where it says, And hope maketh us not ashamed. Because if you, if you don't have hope, it means you, you didn't have experience. And if you didn't have experience, it means you didn't have uh, 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 enough patience. So if, if you don't wait on the Lord, you're going to end up being ashamed, right? And it doesn't mean you didn't have faith. You can have faith and still be ashamed. Let me explain this, you know, because just because you have, if you have faith in Jesus, he's going to take care of you. Whether you're patient or not, it's going to be fine. And you'll see that through experience. But what I'm talking about here is, is the power of waiting, okay? The power of waiting. Sometimes if you don't wait and then it turns out to be fine, you're going to be ashamed. Oh, I should have waited. I should have just kept reading my Bible. I should have just kept praying. Why did I stop? Why did I join these other sinners, these other evil doers? I shouldn't have done that. You're going to be ashamed once the Lord does deliver you. You see what I'm saying? But if you wait on the Lord, you go through the trial, you go through the persecution, you're going to come out the other side perfect, rejoicing, happy. You're going to gain the experience and you're not going to be ashamed of waiting. I'm telling you that. You will not be ashamed. You will hold your hand held high and you will praise God. Praise God. He got me through this. Praise God. I waited on the Lord. There's power in waiting. The world we live in right now uh, tells us not to wait. Tells us to go get it right now. Uh, tells us, to, uh, you, I should have had it yesterday. Why do I have to wait? But, you know, there's power on waiting. There's power on waiting on the Lord, especially. It's like I said, you know, we shouldn't just wait on the Lord. We also have to be patient with other people, you know. We need to we need to love people, be patient with them, be kind to them. If they don't get the gospel the first time, go back, go back a second time, be patient. Um, doesn't mean that we shouldn't have a sense of urgency telling people about Jesus, telling people how to get saved. We should. Salvation's of the utmost importance. It, it should be stressed how important it is. Um, but but what I'm saying is, don't get frustrated with people if they don't get it. Just just wait. Wait on the Lord. Pray to God that God uh, uh, softens up their heart and have patience. And, you know, um, I think you guys get the point. I can, I can go and give more examples. But uh, I just wanted to give a basic message today. Wait on the Lord. Um, be patient with people. And that's my message for the day. You know, we have, we have these, the holidays coming up. Everybody's anxious. Uh, the end of the the end of the world. The, the end of the the end of the year's coming, and you know everybody's trying to rush to get everything done before the end of the year. And I just wanted to remind us all, you know, to have a little patience. You know, have a little patience. Things will come in due time, and and we need to just not get distracted with with all the glitter and gold of uh, of Christmas and and the New Year and all these pagan holidays. Um, and, and just wait on the Lord and, and, and keep reading your Bible, keep praying and keep practicing um, practicing our faith uh, and, and, and practicing our patience uh, that'll work experience and experience hope. Um, let's just be more pra- let's just be more pa- patient and God will supply our every our every need. That's my message for the day guys. I hope hope you enjoyed it. I hope you inspired um, to be a little patient because sometimes, Patience is a hard work to do. Anyway, that's my message for the day. You guys have a blessed, wonderful day in Jesus. God bless you. Thank you for listening. And as always, we're going to give God the last word. Um, well, I'm going to close in prayer, and then we're going to have a reading from 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for listening. God bless. Now let's bow in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you so much for everything you've done for us. Lord, you've done so much for us. Um, Even though sometimes we're not patiently waiting for it, you continue to bless us. We thank you for that, Father. Lord, sometimes we could be a stubborn people who don't want to wait. And we just uh, demand things right now on on our time frame. But Lord, we know that you're in control and 
you're going to take care of us. You have a, the perfect plan and the perfect time frame to get everything done. Lord, just please help us to be more patient and wait um, to see your, uh, your blessings in our lives and uh, be more trusting of you uh, to provide our needs, Lord. Help us be more patient with other people too. Um, sometimes we just get frustrated with people or even our friends or close relatives or loved ones. Lord, just help us uh, be more patient with them and continue to be kind for, uh, kind to them and forgiving towards them, Lord, if they do something that uh, we don't like or frustrates us or upsets us. Lord, just help us forgive them. Be more patient. Sometimes it seems like uh, the hardest work, Lord, is to just wait for uh, your blessings, to, rec uh, to receive your blessings. But um, there's a saying that, uh, that says, good things come to those who wait. And uh, anything worth uh, having is worth waiting for, Lord. And there's nothing better than your blessings to wait for. So we're just going to patiently wait for your blessings, Father. Lord, I ask that you bless this this message. Um, encourage those uh, who understand this message to be more patient, and and I and I ask that you open the eyes of those who don't understand this message yet to help open their eyes and their hearts to understand and hear and come to you, Lord. Be patient with them and be merciful to them. I love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you for listening. Um, we're going to close. As always, we're going to give God the last word. And our reading is going to be from 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 through 17. Amen. God bless. The Bible says, 1 Timothy 1, 12 through 17. <clears throat> and I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry who was before a blasphemer, a, persecu a, a persecutor, and, in, and injurious. And I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all exception. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. How be it for this cause, I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Now to the King eternal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen.